Today we're going to be talking about barrels and barrel condition. Barrel condition is the most important factor that I will be looking at when I'm looking at a gun and valuing it. Value really is determined partly by the overall specification and condition of the gun, but the most important factor by far are the barrels and the barrel condition. So the very first thing I will do when I'm presented with a gun for examination will be to, to, to take the barrels off. I'll have a quick visual look at them. I'll measure them to see what the length is. Again, that can have a commercial factor. Longer barrels are generally more popular in the marketplace than short barrels today. I'm just having a quick visual inspection. And then I'll look down the barrels, examining them externally and internally, looking for traces of rivels, marks and bulges. We're also looking for pitting, any pitting inside the barrels. This is more common on older guns because of the corrosive nature of the ammunition they originally used. Um, and all of these factors are things which will be taken, taken into account. An absence of pitting in an older gun can sometimes tell us that the barrels have been lapped out and polished. I'll just do a quick test here where we hang the barrels on my forefinger and just give them a little, little tap with the knuckle. Lovely musical bell-like tone. I'm doing that and that tells me that the ribs are on sound and true soldered, fully soldered the full length, that nothing is loose, nothing is rattling. The next thing we will do is have a look at the bore diameter. We examine the flats of the actions here and we see a full set of Birmingham proof marks. They're telling us the bore diameter that the gun conformed to when it was submitted for proof, in this case 0.729 of an inch. We have the Birmingham mark, three and a quarter tonne per square inch, which is the service pressure two and three quarter inch chamber length and the 12 in a diamond denoting that it's a 12 bore. So the first thing we will do with the appropriate chamber plug we will insert that to see that it drops to the correct depth two and three quarter inches in this case. I'll just show you how that works on a sectionalized piece of barrel here. The gauge drops into the chamber and then is held in position at the chamber mouth where the restriction into the bore occurs. This, for example, is a two and a half inch chambered gun, and as you can see, the plug stops at two and a half inches. It is absolutely important that the chamber length remains as originally proofed. If a chamber has been extended and the gun hasn't been submitted for reproof, then the gun is out of proof and unassailable and worthless until the work is done to submit the gun for reproof with the gun maker's company. The next stage we move on to is to measure the internal bore diameter. We use this gauge here, an internal bore micrometer. We're going to be measuring the internal diameter of each barrel at 9 inches from the breech face. As you can see, this gauge has a line marked on it there at the 9 inch mark to tell us how far to insert it. We're measuring here and the internal diameter that we are showing on this gauge is 731.731 of an inch and on this side also 731.731 of an inch. The proof marks here tell us that the gun will be going out of proof when we get to the next proof size which is 0 0.740, 740 of an inch. So we're in proof by a good eighth thou which is a very good margin. Um, that probably is pretty much how these barrels were when the gun was built. The next tool we'll use here, diameter gauge here, the short one. This is the gauge that I will use to measure choke borings. This is the restriction at the muzzle. This is a nice short handy gauge for this measurement. I'll just pop that in and that's showing me the bore diameter and showing me as the gauge passes through, shows me the restriction at the muzzle. As we can see we have a 10 thou restriction in the right barrel. The left barrel we inserted into now and that has a restriction 10, 20, 30, just, just under 40 thou. We have a 30, 38 thou restriction. So that's telling me that this pair of barrels are bored a quarter and full choke. So good, good measurements, good specification. Everything is good so far. We have the green light, as it were, with these. Now we move on to this gauge here, with which we measure the minimum wall thickness to measure the thinnest point in the barrel. 
and we'll pop the barrel onto the gauge like so. And then we will take the wall thickness measurement. Now at this point I'm running the gauge up and the barrels up and down on the gauge, looking for the thinnest point within the area that we can measure, turning the barrel slowly round to measure the thickness of the entire circumference of that barrel. So we showed a minimum thickness here of 32 thou on the right barrel, which is extremely good. Um, generally speaking, you'll expect a best gun to measure somewhere between 23, 24 and 30 thou. 32 is giving us a bit of a bonus. Generally speaking, any wall thickness below 20 thou is below the minimum recommended thickness and safety becomes um, severely compromised after that point. Again, I repeat the measurement on the left-hand barrel. And again, that shows us a minimum wall fix of 26 thou. So again, well above the recommended minimum and well within the acceptable limits. So overall, these barrels measure extremely well. I'll just quickly show you this test piece here, which has got two, a couple of the defects that we really are not looking for. The first being on visual inspection. We have this horrific ring bulge at this point here. This has been caused by an obstruction blocking the bore when the gun has been fired, which has caused the bore to burst. Now, a material weakness such as this renders a pair of barrels such as this scrap. There really is nothing that can be done to repair a defect such as that which is why it is extremely important to always check before you fire a gun that the bores are not obstructed in any way. That is the reason why this have made such a perfect um, example to be sectioned for demonstration purposes. But as you can see, the minimum wall thickness, as you can see at the thinnest point here, is really not a great deal. So really, just to, just to wrap up here, I'll just run you through the tools that we've got on the table, which we're using literally every day every time we're examining a gun. We have the, uh, the most important one here, which is the internal bore diameter micrometer for measuring the internal diameter of the barrels. The shorter one here, which we measure, measure the choke borings with. These are the plug gauges for measuring the chamber depths. This one for 12 bore, this one for 16 bore, and this one for 20 bore. I also have them for eight bores, four tens, and 28 bores as well. Selection of chamber, um, sorry, selection of turn screws here that we will use either to remove extractors or to remove stocks from actions if required. Obviously, a tape measure tells us an overall length, which again is an important factor. I hope that's been of service and assistance to you. As you can see, it takes us a good five or ten minutes with each gun that we examine to check the barrels over thoroughly before we can move on to the next step, which will be checking the action and the engraving and the stock.